Yo, what's up guys? My name is Seb and this is the very first video of my new tutorial series covering all the information that you need to get started with speedrunning Sekiro. This time featuring Gyobu. But before we get started, if you do end up liking this video and want to catch more of my content, perhaps check me out over at twitch.tv or join my community discord. All the links are in the description box down below. Let's get started. So when it comes to Kyobu, almost nothing is certain. He's one of the most RNG heavy bosses in the entire game and can therefore be a straight up nightmare when speedrunning. However, there are quite a few tricks that you should know to make your time just a little bit easier. Let's talk about the most important thing first, staggering. Like almost every other boss, Gyobu does have a staggered counter. To be precise, he staggers at every 9th hit. Basic attacks counting as 1, charge attacks as 2 towards set threshold. However, as with every other rule, there are some exceptions. There are exactly 4 states or animations Gyobu can be in during which his stagger counter will not increase, so keep that in mind when keeping track of the current count in your head during the fight. These animations are the following. Number 1. Gyobu's entrance animation. These ideally 6 hits you're dealing do not count. Number 2. Stagger animation. Basically, when you just staggered him, the hits you deal right afterwards do not count towards the next stagger. As simple as that. Number 3. Spear throw attack. Or that's what I call it. Here you can just close the distance and start hitting him to your heart's content. Free damage, but be aware of the moment he leaves his specific animation and transitions into a new one, because that's the moment your hits will start counting again. And last but not least, number 4, Spear Spin Attack. This is pretty much the same as the previous one, nothing out of the ordinary. Alright, so far so good. Now, there's actually just one more nuance to Gyobu's stagger system, and it's related to his phase transition. If you posture break Gyobu on a basic attack, the stagger count will reset to zero. However, if you do end up breaking his posture by deflecting one of his attacks instead, the counter will not be reset. You will start phase 2 with the same count that you have left phase 1 with. So, what's better you may ask? Well, that's something related to the general strategy you are pursuing when fighting Gyobu. The main issue with Gyobu from a speedrunner's perspective is that he likes to run around. A lot. And you probably didn't know that already. So the key to making the boss fight fast is to keep the amount of times he actually gets to speed around the map to a bare minimum. Since we were just talking about staggering, let's continue with that first. We do know that Gyobu will, without fail, start running away from you after each stagger animation. Meaning, we want to kill him in the fewest amount of staggers possible, but we also do not want to needlessly drag the whole fight out by endlessly waiting for him to attack. Experience has shown that the typical approach for phase 1 would be hitting him and deflecting his combos until he's at about 90% posture. Then you can go for the very first stagger and end the phase. Just Whatever you do, you have to be able to get the death blow within the duration of a stagger animation. And on top of that, even though the opportunity should never occur, do not posture break him on a deflect, since that will mess up the entire strategy for phase 2. Assuming you've completed phase 1, phase 2 is actually quite similar. You pretty much just rush towards the first stagger, which usually happens when his posture is at about 40% ish and then you once again make sure to, you can finish him off during the next one. Let's say you did end up posture breaking him on a deflect in phase 1. That would simply offset your next few staggers in phase 2 
making their timings really awkward and you will almost certainly end up having to stagger him three instead of two times. And remember, he always runs away after each one, which loses a lot of time, so let's not do that. That's pretty much the basic framework. Now let's continue with the intricacies. On top of the scenarios in which Gyobu will surely run away, there are also those in which the player has a very good chance of preventing that from happening. Scenario 1. Gyobu's initial sprint after his entrance animation. At the end of his entrance animation, he will always start running. So ideally you want to immediately run after him. There are only two attack patterns that can happen if you chase him properly. One, a simple spear attack. Here you technically do not have to do anything in particular to make him stop moving, but I still advise you to deflect it nonetheless, since it's free damage. Or two, he can start his flurry attack, during which he slashes his spear in somewhat of an X or cross shape pattern. Here you have to deflect the swing that moves from the top right to the bottom left of your screen. This will make him stop. Deflecting the other hit of this combo will not. Scenario 2. Kyobu's standard 3 hit combo. The important part is that if you deflect, not parry, the third hit, Kyobu's AI will put running away as its top priority. But there are two ways to deal with it. You can either 1. Simply dodge to the other side and not deflect it at all, which does always work, or 2. You can still deflect the last hit and immediately reposition by backing off until you're at like a medium distance and roughly in front of him. This will cause his AI to almost always, but not all of the time, to choose a direct hit or direct attack over running away. So I would still call it a solid solution. Give it a shot. Scenario 3. Gyobu's turnaround attack from above. This is pretty much the same as Scenario 2. So let's move on. Path manipulation. Depending on the category you are running, it might be faster to finish Gyobu off at either the castle gate all the staircase close to the Tengu. This is something you will have to get a feeling for because it's incredibly difficult to really put a guide for it on paper. In short, always remember that Gyobu's movement is mainly affected by the way you are moving relative to him. Assuming he is running away from you, if you curve your path just a bit to the right, then he will most likely curve his path to the left and vice versa, and so on. You get the picture. As a basis, you should make it a habit to constantly reposition yourself after every deflect and hit, so that you're always on that side of Yewu, which is closest to your desired kill location. On top of that, when talking about his running away it's a turnaround combo which lets you grapple to him at the end of it, you can slightly influence the amount of time it will take him to actually turn around. His AI is trying to create distance between you and him. Let's say he's running away, but stuck on a wall or something like that. By actually moving back a few steps rather than blindly chasing him, will make him turn around quicker. If he's not stuck and you straight up chase him, his AI will be caught in a loop of trying to create distance for a little while, which causes him to turn around at a later point in time. Now, don't get me wrong, this can be both an advantage or disadvantage, depending on whether he's running towards the location you want him to or not. It's something you will have to get a feeling for by yourself. Apart from that, there's one very effective way of affecting his general movement. 
It's making use of the phase 1 death blow. If you position yourself towards the side you want him to run towards before death blowing, then he will do so at the start of phase 2, making it very easy to get him stuck inside the castle gate, for example. Alright, that's enough talking for now. I've included two reference fights, one ending at the gate and one near the stairs. Enjoy. Woohoo! Props to you for making it all the way to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this type of content, please give it a like, or if you want to go one step further, go ahead and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. Also, if you want to see a video about a specific topic, then feel free to leave a comment down below. See you guys next time.